There is little to praise in such treatment by the FBI and the Secret Service of perhaps the most important single piece of evidence in the assassination case. Moreover, the Warren Commission seriously compromised itself by allowing the Secret Service, the FBI, and the CIA to investigate questions involving their own actions. The Commission had before it the hard fact that Oswald's notebook contained the name, phone number, and license plate number of Dallas FBI agent James Hostey. The FBI's explanation was that Hostey had asked Ruth Payne, with whom Marina Oswald was living, to let him know where Oswald was staying, that he jotted down his phone number, and that Marina, under prior instructions from her husband, also copied down Hostie's license plate. The question of a link between the killer and the FBI was indeed a legitimate part of the investigation. The Commission's handling of that question is scarcely justifiable. What it did was to accept as conclusive sworn affidavits from J. Edgar Hoover and other FBI officials that Oswald was never employed in any capacity by the FBI. The Commission says it also checked the FBI's own files, but mentions no other investigation. It followed the same curious procedure with the CIA, taking the word of top CIA officials that Oswald had no connection with that agency either. The commission then came to the sweeping conclusion that there was absolutely no type of informant or undercover relationship between an agency of the U.S. government and Lee Harvey Oswald at any time. Now, elsewhere, the Warren Report argues persuasively the difficulty of proving a negative, of proving, in that case, that Oswald was not a member of a conspiracy. You remember that it hedged its conclusion, saying only that there was no evidence of a conspiracy. Yet the Commission had no hesitation in asserting another far-reaching negative, that Oswald was not involved with any agency of the U.S. government ever. Oswald's mother, Marguerite, has always maintained that her son was a government agent, she favors the CIA, and that he was innocent of the assassination. Mrs. Oswald, what sort of proof do you have that your son was an agent of this government? Now, proof? Eddie, that's a very strong question. I think the Warren Commission members themselves gave Marguerite Oswald a proof. They want us to believe that Lee Harvey Oswald went to Russia as a defector, and yet he got out of the Marine Corps three years before his hitch was up on a dire need discharge. Now, this is documented. This is what they tell the American people. They go into great details. And Lee Harvey Oswald got out of the Marine Corps three months ahead of time because his mother had an accident, which was the truth. And it all went through the Red Cross legitimately. And uh, when he came home, he stayed with his mother three days. We sort of know that story. And then he left for Russia. And so this is supposed to be all cut and dry. But when you read the Warren Report, and when you know the case, and this is my case, and my son, so I know it, then you see a little part where the Warren Commission says, remember, the documentation says, that Lee Harvey Oswald uh, was given a passport by the State Department to travel to Russia, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and etc. And at that time, these countries were not restricted. Now, how can Lee Harvey Oswald get out of the Marine Corps uh, three months ahead of time on a dire need discharge and at the same time be issued a passport to travel. The evidence is overwhelming that Mrs. Oswald is wrong as to whether her son did assassinate the president. Yet there remain disturbing indications that she may not be quite so wrong about some kind of link between Oswald and various intelligence agencies of the United States. The question of whether Oswald had any relationship with the FBI or the CIA is not the agencies, of course, are silent. Although the Warren Commission had full power to conduct its own independent investigation, it permitted the FBI and the CIA to investigate themselves and so cast a shadow on the answers. We're cutting four inches off our 18-inch heavy-duty Reynolds wrap to make a point. The point? Lots of times when you need heavy-duty Reynolds wrap, you don't need it 18 inches wide. So we made a new heavy-duty foil, 14 inches wide. We call it Reynolds wrap broiling foil. How come? It's just right for lining broiling pans. Use it for freezing, too. And for cooking. And for lining the grill. Same wonderful extra strong Reynolds wrap, but four inches narrower. So broiling foil saves waste, saves money when you don't need our wider heavy-duty foil. 
Like all Reynolds Wrap, it's oven-tempered for flexible strength. Try new heavy-duty Reynolds Wrap broiling foil, 14 inches wide, Reynolds Wrap. A foil by any other name just ain't the same. Watch this next scene. If you recognize yourself, I have good advice for you. Do you drag yourself through the day tired and weary? Well, your trouble could be iron-poor, tired blood. If you take vitamins and still feel tired, vitamins alone can't build up iron-poor blood. But Geritol can. Two Geritol tablets or two tablespoons of liquid Geritol contain seven vitamins plus twice the iron in a pound of calf's liver. In one day, Geritol iron is in your bloodstream carrying strength and energy throughout your body. Check with your doctor, and if you're tired due to iron-poor blood, take Geritol and feel stronger fast in seven days. And now a word about another fine product. Did simple nervous tension keep you awake last night? Then take two Sominex tablets as directed for 100% safe, natural-like sleep. Take Sominex tonight and sleep safe and restful sleep, sleep. Take Sominex tonight and sleep. A CBS News inquiry. The Warren Report continues. Here again is Dan Rather. More than one critic of the Warren Report has attracted over the question of witnesses, which ones it heard and which of those it decided to believe. Once again, Edward J. Epstein. I'm not sure that the commission went below the surface, but then no one could be sure uh, of whether they did or not because from what's visible, what we can see, um, the commission did seem to bring forth a, most of the t t testimony of most of the relevant witnesses. Whether these witnesses were saying all they knew or whether there were other witnesses they should have called is another problem. I think there are, you can show examples of other witnesses the commission didn't call. There was a witness, Mrs. Eric Walther. And I saw this man in the window with a gun. And there was another man beside him. And uh, he was holding the gun down. His, his arms were resting on the window. Well, they never called her, nor did a commission lawyer ever investigate her or, or go down and, and ask her any questions. The Warren Commission and its staff interviewed 552 witnesses. Their testimony takes up these 26 thick volumes. Yet the question of whether it interviewed the right witnesses and how it evaluated the testimony it did hear are basic to any decision on how well it did its job. For instance, what about Mrs. Carolyn Walther? who saw two men and a gun in a different window of the school book depository and who never got to tell her story to the commission. David Bellin, an attorney for the commission staff who had a hand in the decision not to call Mrs. Walther after her interviews with the FBI, has said that the commission simply could not hear every single person who had been in the plaza that day. He pointed out that Mrs. Walther's woman companion standing next to her told investigators Mrs. Walther had never mentioned seeing any men. Nevertheless, among those 552 witnesses who were called by the commission were many whose testimony was considerably less relevant than Mrs. Walters. Perhaps the commission should have had the chance to decide whether or not she saw what she says she did. Right now, long after the fact of the commission report being out, right now, what bothers you most about the report? Are there a, is there a central question or yes. central questions that bother you most? There is one central question that does bother me, and that is, it involves the autopsy that was performed on President Kennedy. And um, there was a conflict, or really a contradiction, between the FBI report on the autopsy, which the FBI says they received from the autopsy doctors, at least they said in these reports, and uh, the autopsy report published by the Warren Commission. And I don't think we have to get into the exact details, but it was an absolute if one was true, the other couldn't be true. It concerned the path of the bullet through President Kennedy's body. Well, FBI said it didn't go through. It only went in a short distance. The Warren Report went and said it went, or the, pardon me, the, Warren, the autopsy in the Warren Report said it went clean through and uh, exited. And there was evidence, uh, evidence that I think any lawyer or law court would have demanded, and that is the actual photographs of the autopsy and the x-rays. 